Right, we're with Dave at Bitwig now. Hey Dave, how Hi. you doing? Good to see you. I'm good. Yourself? Yeah, good, thank you. Good, good. thanks. Okay. Um, so Bitwig Studio 5.2 is mm -hmm. currently in beta, is that correct? Yes, it's yeah. just landed for our users so they yeah. can test it already. Um, hopefully releasing whenever beta is done, whenever sure. the cake is done baking. Yep, amazing. Um, yeah. What's new? Well, a lot of things in this update are featured kind of focusing kind of around a studio. Mm -hmm. focus so that means uh, a high quality compressor for all purposes yeah. some model eqs that kind of take what hardware is done in a good way and presenting it differently yeah and uh some editing workflows so that your keyboard can be your main way of working with audio all those sorts of yeah. things so Fantastic. we can take a look real quick absolutely if yeah. you like um <clears throat> got a project here going and on my master track we've already got compressor plus here which is our goal was to make a compressor that does everything and it works a little bit differently. You're already seeing color gain reduction because it's doing analysis in the multiband domain before it does unified compression at the output. So it's looking at all the individual signals which allow us to fine tune all these character options that we've got. So just with one knob, an auto timing control and a character choice, I can quickly morph on the master track here from vanilla which is saying yes totally trust my settings i'm sure they're great to something more characterful so from the smooth side uh, more mastering a minimal distortion slow response and we see the different bands responding to something that's really pushing we got like a glue mix bus in the middle and then smash on the other end which is just really going to push through and punch in a different way and if you do like working in the multiband side, we, we've tried to make that simpler as well. So for each of the bands, whether it's lows, low mids, highs, highs, uh, instead of giving you a whole bank of options where you're just defining the whole process over and over again, now I can go ahead and say a little bit less response from the bass so it doesn't trigger as quickly. Or maybe the timing of the high mids should be a little bit slower too so it doesn't respond as much. So it's just giving you a way of reaching in and approaching compression in a totally, well, in a bit of a different way. Um, yeah. So from the Compressor Plus side of it, that's one thing. If I were to go over in this project to a different track, let's see. Wow. So I have a little synth line going here a little bit. Um, Something else we also did was model some classic EQs. So if I go into the EQ category, we've got all of our normal friends for defining everything, but then focus, sculpt, and tilt. And they're saying exactly what they are, even in the descriptions and the help. This is a modeled Pultec EQ P1, because the components that are in there and the musical interface of only giving you so many choices is really a way that people like to work and then we put some modern niceties on top of it. So yes, it works in the way you would expect an EQP1 to work, where if I go ahead and boost and I can see blue for the change, if I boost the lows and then engage the attenuators, I'm doing the classic bass trick of now yeah. kind of tuning what's on the low end at whatever frequency feels right. And again, I'm giving you exactly the same choices that you had on the hardware, but a choice you didn't have on the hardware was what saturation do you want applied? Right now, this is an impossibly clean version of what's going on. So if I had my own plugin or wanted to build my own effects grid patch, I could build my saturation algorithm. Or I choose two and go for what the EQP was offering in the first place, its original sound, or even a transistor model with odd harmonics and a little bit of punch in the middle so that I can do something different altogether. Um, and then in the modern realm, aside from, yes, being something you could control or modulate with an LFO if you want to be fun, uh, we also have this option up in the inspector, which I could show you in the help also, called Stereo Eyes, which is an idea we've had before, but what it does is it says, now you've got two full component models, and we'll just shift the values in a nonlinear way and let you emphasize left versus right. right or even mid versus side, if that's how you want to work. So that suddenly, you have a little bit of divergence between the two channels. Yeah. 
instead of doubling this up and doing something crazy. So that's a little bit with the EQ side of things. And then uh, just on the editing for a moment, if we go in and take what we've got, whether I'm inside of a clip where I can edit a clip and have individual audio events, or I'm on the arranger level, it doesn't matter. Um, all the onsets are shown here. And now things like onsets, like these little triangles, when I just press left and right arrow, I'm now immediately skipping between them because those might be the most relevant events that I want to work with. So if I'm just using the keyboard and selecting things, I can kind of freely go between a time selection or an object selection and then say, well, it's one thing to reverse drums. We know what that sounds like. But what if I reverse the pattern instead? Right as I get into the drum fill here. <laughs> Oh, I see. So, just a way of saying whatever is most relevant, if it's a note clip, it's going to be notes or your cue markers for your verse, chorus, whatever. Um, and then, even if I go over into the arranger, I'm just going straight between the points that might be useful and selecting them between tracks and applying all kinds of things that might be useful in that realm of just editing them together. Fantastic. So yeah, a lot of a bit of studio focus, but I mean, if your DAW is robust and you can keep your hands on the keyboard, people tend to be happy. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Hey, thanks very much. Hey, thanks for coming by. Good to see you.